Okay, today's video lesson is on a very, very important topic called the mole. Now, it sounds kind of ridiculous and silly that we call it the mole, but um, you are going to see this over and over and over and over again for the rest of the semester and into the next semester. It's very, very important in chemistry. I, I put a lot of stress and emphasis on the mole because we use it for so many different calculations and so many different connections. Okay, so in this lesson, it's an introdu introduction to the mole, so I'm going to give you some ideas, basic concepts behind this. We'll work on problems in class and go into more depth. So what is the mole? Well, hopefully you know that atoms are really, 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 really small, and so since they're so small, we need a way to kind of keep track and keep, you know, keep them in order so we know how many we have in a, in a container. Well, they're way too, too small to actually count, and they're way too small to really measure individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to group them together in what are we, we call moles. Now, at the very essence of what a mole is, the same thing as a dozen, as a pair, Anything that we group together, we basically are, is the same thing we talk about with a mole. So if I say that we have one dozen of something, that means we have 12 of those something. So a dozen eggs is 12 eggs. A dozen people is 12 people. We use these words to conjure up a number. Okay, and that's, that's the basic idea of using the word a dozen. So if we had two dozen, you would know that I have 24 of something. Well, in chemistry, we use the word mole in the same fashion. So when we say we have one mole of something, we say that we have 602 sectillion or 602 billion trillion things. Okay, now that's a very, 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 very big number. It's a number you can't even really put your wrap your brain around. Um, so we don't really write it this way because it's way too many zeros to actually include. So we write it in scientific no notation, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Okay, so you're going to see this number quite a bit. This is known as Avogadro's number. Okay, so we use Avogadro's number, so I'm going to use it a lot instead of constantly saying 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm going to constantly be saying Avogadro's number. So when I talk about Avogadro's number, I am referring to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Why is it called Avogadro's number? Well, because um, Lorenzo Romano Amadeo Carlo Avogadro came up with this concept of using, um, you know, this concept of using quantities to, to count particles. Anyway, so this, this is his original idea. So, as I said before, if we have a dozen, we have 12. If we have a mole of eggs, we would have Avogadro's number of eggs, right? Because that's what the mole means. It's the same thing as talking about a dozen. If I have a pair of shoes, I have two shoes. Okay, a ream, a ream of paper is actually 500 pieces of paper. So we would say anytime we talk about reams, we would have 500. Baker's dozens are 13. So, a dozen bowling balls, 12 bowling balls. A mole of bowling balls would be 6.02 to the 23rd or Avogadro's number of bowling balls. A dozen uh, atoms of carbon, we have 12 atoms of carbon. One mole of carbon atoms is Avogadro's number of carbon atoms. Okay, it's a huge, huge number of atoms. So if I have one mole of carbon atoms, then I have Avogadro's number of carbon atoms. If I have one mole of carbon dioxide, I don't say that I have atoms, I actually say that I have molecules. Why? Because carbon dioxide is a molecule. It's covalently bonded together. Don't forget that when we're talking about molecules, we have two nonmetals. Okay, so whenever we have two nonmetals, we are talking about molecules, and therefore we would say that we have Avogadro's number of molecules of carbon dioxide. Now, ionic compounds that are made up of a metal and a nonmetal do not, we can't call these mo uh, molecules, so do not call these molecules. This isn't a molecule of sodium chloride because it's made up of a bunch of ions, okay, that are, uh, that are joined together, and I don't know why that's doing that, but, okay, there we go. So because of there's ions in here, we don't call these um, molecules, we call them formula units, okay? So we have molecules, we have our formula units. Ionic compounds are going to be composed of ions, and so if I have this many moles, if I have one mole of sodium chloride, I'm going to have Avogadro's number of ions. If I have one mole of sodium chloride, then I'm going to have Avogadro's number of chloride ions. We can break them up into individual ions. We can do that with our molecules too, because look at our carbon, we would have two oxygens, sorry, carbon dioxide, I would have two oxygens and one carbon. So when we look at one mole of carbon dioxide, I actually have one mole of carbon 
and two moles of oxygen. I'll show you a little bit more of how we break up our compounds in the very last example I'm going to do. Really what I want to talk about right here are the types of particles. So what I'm illustrating here is that we have different types of particles. We have elements, molecular compounds, ionic compounds, and ions. So it all depends on what the particle is that I'm talking about. So if I have atoms, things like carbons, irons, leads, you know, then, then I'm going to talk, you know, the elements, I'm going to be describing the atoms. If I have a compound, it's either going to be a molecular compound or an ionic compound. If it's a molecular, I'm going to call it a molecule. If it's an ionic compound, I have to call it a formula unit, okay? And ions, obviously, I'm going to call ions. All right, so those are the types of particles, and I'll show you how I'm going to use that in just a little bit. All right, so last thing here is that what we do with this, this unit, this is called the unit equality. And what it does is it allows us to create what are called conversion factors. Now, any unit that is something per something else can be called a conversion factor. Okay, so what's a conversion factor? What it allows me to do is to make conversions and predictions about what I have. So let's say I have two moles of carbon. Okay, I want to know how many atoms of carbon do I have. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to figure out. Well, if I have two moles of carbon... What I know from the conversion factor, what I know is that, that, that every mole, one mole, is equal to Avogadro's number of particles. So what I can do here is I can create what's called the conversion factor. I'm going to put a little multiplication symbol here. I'm going to draw a line. Okay, this is my conversion factor, and it's based on these unit equalities here. So what I'm going to do is put down here at the bottom mole of carbon, and on the top I'm going to put atoms of carbon. Okay, because that's what I'm converting to. I'm going to be able to convert back and forth between moles and atoms. Okay, so my moles are down here and my atoms are on the top. What I do is I put mole on the bottom and I put Avogadro's number on the top times 10 to the 23rd. So now all I need to do is carry out the mathematical calculation. So I take the two, you can kind of pretend that, I don't normally like to do this, but you can pretend that this is over one, right? So you can do two times Avogadro's number divided by one. But you don't really have to do the division by one, of course. So we're just gonna double Avogadro's number. 1.204 times 10 to the 24th um, power, number of atoms of carbon, okay? So there you have it. You're going to basically just, now this is your conversion factor. What it allows you to do is to convert from one unit to a new unit. Now if you think about this, these units here can cancel out. Just like if you're multiplying 3 over 1 times you know, 4 ninths, right? You could take 3s and cancel them out, okay? Make this a 1 and make that a 3 down here. Well, I can do the same thing with my words. The words are going to cancel out. The units are going to cancel out because when I do this mathematical calculation, I'm dropping out my, my number of moles. And this is what's called the conversion factor. And I can go back and forth and I can change these conversion factors based on the, 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 what I'm starting with and what I'm looking for.